we did it we made it we stretched it out for 89 miles fantastic let's pump some rock and roll trucker welcome to the rock and roll trucker the channel that likes to rock and roll the channel that likes to play we love to eat we love to truck we love to see the world around us and just have a big old time come on in and have a seat and let's have a good chat we'll tell you where we're going we'll tell you where we've been yes that is me playing the music good morning yeah look at that light it's dark I'm all glowing all nice and blue looking there it's hazy it's raining a little bit there so we got regular weather haze in there you still got some of the stupid Canadian forest fire stuff hanging in the air and all but we're on the way I left out you know it's been a little while ago I didn't turn the camera on when I pulled out because it was pitch black dark and you couldn't see my face in here anyway so we got a little light going but we're rolling in on Knoxville pretty close to it we were at mile marker 401 I think well there's one right there 402 we we're trying to get to a 374 if you heard that little ding I don't know if you can hear that there that is my truck repeatedly reminded me that you are low on your primary fuel source yeah I know I'm trying to get down here to the cheaper stuff on the TA app the uh, TA there's there's two TAs and a Petro down here in uh, Knoxville you got the TA East on th exit 374 then you've got the Petro and the TA West on exit 369 Last night when I went to bed, they all three had matching fuel prices. I don't know which one will have the better discount, but they all three had one of the lower fuel prices in the entire area, strangely enough, for a big box truck stop. So we are trying to uh, stretch this fuel for another, you know, a little under 30 miles. So 20... 27 miles now. So we just gotta hope there's about four or five, you know, three, four, or five gallons left in that tank there, which if there wasn't, we would probably be sitting on the side of the road right now anyways, because I don't even know if that's enough for the uh, pickups to even suck any fuel into the motor. So they usually most of the time these trucks, when you get down to that very bottom empty line there, you've got a little bit more in the tanks than you think. But sometimes not. When I was hauling scrap metal and working for SBL in Chattanooga, I had a uh, 2015 uh, Freightliner Cascadia, manual 10 speed and everything, uh, A cab. Good pulling, good truck. I enjoyed it. But when the uh, fuel gauge on that thing said you were about done, you better by God be pulling into a fuel pump. And uh, the reason I know this is from experience. I tried to stretch it out one day and I had a fuel stop I wanted to get to and I jumped off on the exit and uh, it died and completely shut down on the uh, exit ramp. I ended up having to walk back and forth, uh, go get a gas can and walk back and forth and get enough gallons of diesel to get, the, get it to fire up and get a can of ether and everything. To, get it fired up primed back up and all and uh, I learned from there when that sucker says it's done it is done this one I've been a little bold and brave with it a couple of times and it seems to go a little further than what it should although I am majorly pressing my luck on it this morning I am pretty far down <laughs> we shall see though just got to get to the 374 down there we're trying to pinch them pennies spend any more on that fuel than we got to other than truck payment that is absolutely far and away the uh, biggest expense on running this here truck for sure yeah we uh, had a I stayed up a little later than I meant to getting editing the other video and doing a little exercises and just getting all my stuff together and trying to get prepared to get home today and uh, but when I finally went to bed I ended up sleeping pretty hard pretty good woke up feeling all right Got me a coffee, we're still sipping on it right now. A couple of near stale donuts, you know. Breakfast of champions, we're eating like a gourmet in here. 
the uh, all the stuff that fuels a driver to keep going down the road. Breakfast of a truck driving champion, anyway. Uh, hopefully, 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 not much traffic has piled up in Knoxville this morning yet. We will be at that fuel stop before seven o'clock. Hopefully, we beat the. Hopefully the traffic's not out in the little section where it usually gets rough down through here. And then once we get to that TA east there, we won't quite be completely past where it piles up, but we'll be pretty far through where it would normally pile up. So it should be good. And then it'll just be foot in the floor, all systems go to Nashville. We're gonna get there. We got until noon. We should be there well before that. But we will get slowed up, I know that. We will get chewed up in traffic in Nashville. There's just, there is going to be no avoiding that. We're just not gonna escape it. We're not gonna be able to get out of it, but we'll get the job done nonetheless. And then we will escape that city and go to my town. We're gonna get back to Chattanooga, y'all. Y'all gonna go with me. I don't have room for all y'all to sleep over and stay at the apartment there, but Y'all can ride with me. I'll let you out in town, show you where the good places to eat are. I'll tell you where to go. Just can't keep you. You are more than welcome to ride along. Some of these little, uh, these little cars, some of these people are just absolute breakneck lunatics out here on this road. Jeez. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna continue onward, get to this fuel stop. Hopefully get to this fuel stop. <laughs> I'll have some good material for you guys to watch if I don't make it. So, I'll shut this here thing off now that I've told you good morning. We're gonna, I'm gonna try not to make any incredibly long clips on this journey here so I can get a little bit when I get home too. Keep you informed because my life is so interesting. You and you and you and you and, you and everybody out there, y'all need to know what goes on in this guy's life, right? Riveting material. I know you're just sitting on the edge of your seats waiting. But yeah, I'm going to get off here for now. Never fear. I know you weren't, but I'll be back. Alright, y'all. We're still rolling. We decided to bypass the 374 and get in even, even a little bit more braver to get down here to the 369 because starting to get to be that busy part of the morning and I got to thinking about it and that 374, the TA West you have to make a left turn back out of there to get back pointed over to the interstate and there's no red light or anything and it is not a good situation trying to pull out of there in morning or afternoon traffic when people are starting to pile up and get to work and stuff so I decided to opt for the 369 just for easier getting out of but that also means stretching this out for another five miles are we gonna make it what do you think because when I tell you I am low I mean I am low we just passed the way station we got green lit there we got the good old green light so we didn't have to waste any fuel get back up to speed so we are about to come we're about to hit the hill going down and out of the whole out of the Knoxville area here towards the 369 Watt Road exit. You got a pilot, you got a Petro, you got a TA. We're gonna go to the Petro or the TA. They both have the exact identically priced fuel this morning according to the app. Good price on it. At least as far as the modern day pricing goes, anyways. I'll get a little bit of a discount at both of them. I assume it'll probably be pretty similar. We don't ever know until after the fact on the fueling statements with this card we use, but I don't think one is going to really be much more than the other with their price being that low. It'll, it'll probably be pretty minimal discount compared to what I get in some of the other ones, but it will be some. Every penny per gallon counts. I, if I, I'll get a nickel or ten cents guaranteed minimal, which probably not expecting much more than that because their price is pretty far down comparatively speaking to everywhere else I've been this week like substantially down so there's probably not a lot of room 
separating their pump price from what the raw price is right now. So I doubt they're going to come down way too far on it. But we are going to have to decide which one we want to go to. Petro is a little bit more of a pain in the butt to get in, but the TA will be a little bit more of a pain in the, in the butt to get out. So it's a pick your poison kind of deal at the moment here. One thing we'll do while we're getting off the exit here, we'll check and make sure our signs are matching, make sure the prices are still the same this morning. And the Petro has, yep, it looks like, looks like their signs are true to what the app says. I fueled it one this week earlier and I pulled in and it was like 10 cents higher than what the uh, update on the app it's in irritated me a little bit because I planned my fueling around it. That was not awesome, but I guess it had just went up like right before I had gotten there or something. I don't know. But let me see here. Yeah, we're going to beat that again. Sorry car behind me. I know I'm heavy. I love my good old Morticia. My good old T680 here, but the engineers that design the shift patterns and everything in this auto shift transmission, it really needs a reprogram. It, it, it is, they, they didn't set us up for success on the factory settings on this thing. And yes, I drive an auto shift, and you can kiss my ass if you don't like it. I can drive any other transmission you throw at me, set me in a seat, and I will prove it. This is just what fit my budget, and I don't have my manhood depending hanging on the fact of whether I drive a manual transmission or not. I have worn my left leg out, jamming gears and playing in stop and go traffic on more miles than I could ever keep up, keep track with at this point. And I don't mind a bit having this auto shift, especially when we're in dumpy traffic. So if you don't, if you think I'm some sort of a less than a driver than you simply because I am running an auto shift truck. Let me unzip my britches, show me my high and show you my rear end and you can kiss it twice today and three times on Sunday because I can truck drive with you or anybody else you know on any given day and whatever transmission you want to toss out at me don't hurt my manhood a bit driving an auto. Not even a little bit. Just to clear that up. <laughs> Some of y'all drivers just get plain ignorant about these auto shifts. Do I always like them? No. They do have some aggravating points and disadvantages. and uh, You don't have as much control over things. But they do have some good points and advantages also. They're not all that bad. They do not make you less of a driver unless, you know, I think if you know, I, well, I've got opinions on how they're sending them through the schools and stuff and putting them on these restrictions on the licenses for auto shift only and stuff like that. That's kind of, that's a little sketchy, but the industry's heading to where the manuals are going the way of the dinosaur anyway, so I don't know. But all I know is I can drive whatever you put in front of me. And I don't need a manual transmission to feel like a man. Just so y'all know. I'll drive as good as you or out drive you any day of the week and whatever you want to play in. That's not being cocky or anything. It's just the truth. I've been out here for quite a minute and covered a lot of miles. No concern on my part what you think about my auto shift transmission. But here we are. We made it. We stretched that out for 89 miles. We did it. Fantastic. I'm going to get out here and pump this fuel now that I've went on my little rant. I'll get back with you in a bit. Hang out. Go inside. Use the restroom. Get you a snack. We'll get back out on the road shortly. What's up, everybody? Question of the day. You ever been to Nashville? Well, <laughs> here's what it's like for a good chunk of the day. There might be an hour or two in between that's not like this, but that's pretty much it. I'm not going directly downtown at the moment, so we might not see a big Batman building, football stadium and stuff like that at the moment, but we'll sure show you some traffic. We're circling around. Uh, we got to go on 440, on I-440, get around kind of towards the 
west side over there. No, uh, we're not real, real far from where we're going. But at least it's a little sunny now. It was super dark and bad this morning, and then it kind of cleared up, and then it got super bad and dark again, and now it's cleared back up to sunny. I, the, the the weather is just completely, completely schizophrenic right now. But let's see, we're we're moving slowly, but we're actually moving steady at the moment. Let's see what happens once we merge all the way on to 440 West over here. I'm anticipating a pretty good slowdown. Sometimes just a couple of short miles in Nashville can really turn into a, an extended ordeal. Let's see what happens. And I'm pretty sure the place we're going to is not real big and it's kind of in a maybe in a slightly tighter area. So I'm hoping I'm not, I don't have a lot of trouble getting in or out of this place. I hope it's just not an altogether just nightmare pain in the butt to do. We're going to find out shortly. I'm going to find out. You're going to find out too. You're looking out the window, seeing the same thing I am right now. You are living vicariously as a truck driver at the moment. If you are not already a truck driver, it's like those honorary degrees that college gets to give out to some people of prominence. We're giving you an honorary CDL right now. You are truck driving. Alright, looks like we're going to move a little bit. We're going to go to exit 6, 9 tenths of a mile away it looks like. We're getting close. We are getting close. I hope this is simple and I hope they unload quick. And then we'll hang out just for a few minutes to see if we're going to find any scraps to pick up to take back towards Chattanooga for a little bit of quick extra revenue, although I am not in high hopes of it happening and I'm not going to wait around real long for it. I got life to deal with. Ready to go home. Let me see. Four tenths of a mile. I see the sign for that exit up there. Let's see here. Oh, we're hopping off on Nolansville Pike. Getting on 41A. Yeah, this might not be horrendously difficult. That's a little better than just jumping off into one of these neighborhood areas. Well, I say that now. Let's wait and reserve and see what happens. Let's see, we're going to do a left turn on the 41 South. Not before we stop at this here red light. Let's see if it stays green long enough for more than three cars to go. Let's see if I end up having to sit through the full red light stop. Probably so. No one has a... Ah. Be doing that truck. Yeah, we're going to get stuck. I had to put it in the manual mode there. I'm trying to extend the shift pattern a little bit there. It likes to shift too soon. The programming on the transmission is awful whatever the, the factory settings on it. So I was trying to I put it in the manual while it was in mid shift of its own and it wanted to beep and ding at me. We're going to put it in manual now. We're just going to control our own destiny with these shifting points here. All right. Hopefully, I, I don't know. I haven't been at this red light in a while. I don't remember if it's a long one or a short one. Hopefully it's timed well because I'm ready to get this done. Ready to get it over with. Well, I wonder how far, I don't know how much total time we've got. It says 9.15 a.m. We should be there. Well, we should be just right around the corner from it here, I believe. Shouldn't be far, folks. Bear with me. Bear with me. We're getting there. Queen of Hearts tattoo across the way there. That place has been around for about as long as I've had a CDL, I believe. My first truck driving job was not real terribly far from where I'm sitting right now. And, uh, I remember that place. That place apparently does a pretty reasonable business. It stayed open for quite a long time. Come on. red light. These people are tired of hearing me ramble and try and feel dead air here. They want to see some truck driving. 
I want to see us get somewhere. I want to see me get somewhere. We're not sitting on the center. Are we sitting too far from it? Too far over it? What's going on here? This is lasting a little bit longer than I actually thought it might, to tell you the truth, folks. Yeah, little car. Do the work for me there. That little car beside me. There we go. It was creeping up, trying to trigger the sensor there. Much appreciated. Much obliged. I think it was getting ready to turn anyways, but we'll give them credit. We'll let them have that little win. Now, where are we going? Four tenths of a mile. Turning on to Newsom Street. I hope that is a truck compatible street. We'll know soon, won't we? Let me see. I hope it don't come on. Truck, speed up. Get up this hill. We don't want to stop at the red light on the hill. We're heavy. You don't seem to enjoy taking off from a hill with a heavy load, and I don't blame you. I don't like it either. Let's see. Yep, you wait there, pickup truck. here guys let's go see what happens y'all wait for me i'll be right back we're gonna go check in and see what's up i'll be back directly all right we are at the right place and fortunately i did kind of i did get pointed in here mostly the right direction but this is a not bad not insurmountable not undoable here but it is an interesting little dock we've got to park into a little tiny dock up and over concrete ramp and mounds and not a real friendly pathway to the dock there and I'm going to have to swing out into this little alleyway and back my way up into it and not catch my landing gear on anything and not blow a tire not the greatest setup I've ever been faced with but a professional driver so we're gonna make sure we get this in here we're gonna get it done let's see here not a lot of room to work with guys we're gonna have to tackle this at a weird angle we're gonna have here some twisting and popping and grunting and squeaking out of the frame of the truck and the uh, trailer I do believe we've got some not it's not a flat surface that I am about to back over luckily there's not really any traffic coming through here it's kind of a dead little street but not real crazy about what I'm about to have to back over here but we ain't got much choice 
my only real concern is catching the landing gear back here. trailer over way more than I like. Oh, I don't like this guy. I really don't like it. my truck up to deliver a load. These places get trucks in on the regular and they just leave you with garbage like this. This is not... Guys, they got an air compressor going off over there. If you hear that loud noise, it sounds like a jet plane going by. I'm sitting beside a outlet for a dang air compressor or something. Lord, I'm twisted up, bound up, and twisted in the van. I do not like the way my truck's sitting right now. Let's go see if, I, if that's going to be okay or if I need to get squared up in there. I'll be back. Hey, guys. So here's what we're dealing with. Sorry about that noise. It's about to drive me insane, but do y'all see the... Uh, I'll see the pitch my truck is at. I had to back one side of the truck up on that to get off into this little to get off into this little alleyway back here and then you can see just how look at the gap there, how far the trailer is tipped up to the side. That is not how you want to see your truck twisted and bent at a loading dock. And there ain't no real way to avoid it. That is, uh, that is not awesome, guys. And they're going to unload part of it in there. Then i got to pull around over here to this container over here and let them get the rest. Not real enthused with this situation, but yeah. I don't like having to risk tearing my truck up to get a load delivered. That is for certain. That is for certain. We got done there. We got our truck out of that wonky dock and it was tight getting back out of the little alleyway there back onto the highway because I couldn't get really go back out the way that I came in. But we're back out on the interstate now. We're back on 24. We are on the way home. Looks like we're not going to have anything to pick up so we're just going to have to go home for free and eat another not great pay period and I'll be sacrificing a little bit of the next pay period too to actually spend more than 10 minutes at, 10 minutes at home and enjoy my life it's, you, know, you gotta be out here selling your soul 24 hours a day to make it in the modern world it seems like but it is what it is I'm going home I'm gonna sit down on my couch and I'm gonna bring going to drink some very high powered brown liquid and relax. That's what I'm going to do. What are y'all going to do this weekend? Y'all going to get into wild stuff over the weekend? You're going to wait until Tuesday? I think I asked y'all this on another video, but I'm asking you again because I'm curious. What are y'all holiday plans? It's hard to call it a holiday weekend when the, week, uh, the holiday isn't until Tuesday, but technically speaking, it's a holiday weekend. I imagine some of you probably get the weekend all the way through Tuesday off. I don't know. I don't get it. I'm just taking it. I'm definitely not getting paid for it. We're going to roll forward. We're going to find us a stop to get us a cold drink. I just was feeling anxious about many, many things. I was getting unloaded, stood outside, and got myself hot like an idiot. I didn't really particularly want to run the truck with it setting up at a pitch like it was. That might be a little nitpicky, but 
I don't like it. I don't want all the oil drained off the one side of the pan and sitting there just letting it run like that and everything. So I prefer not to do it, whether that's mechanically sound logic or not, I can't very well say, but it makes sense to me and that's what we did. What do you do? Looks like we're gonna luck out with traffic. I have, no matter what time of the day we get to Chattanooga, I'll hit some there most likely, but maybe I'll luck out. Let's will that into existence. Chattanooga is gonna be free, clear, and easy flowing for me today. I see it, I believe it. I already have it, it already exists. Yes, we're gonna make it through Chattanooga easily. I like it. Do you like it? I like it if you like it. I'm gonna move on down the road here. So get closer to Mon Eagle or something. I'll throw you back on. I'll take you for the ride up the hill and back down there. I'll let y'all take a look at the crazy people and the runaway truck ramps and stuff. If you're not a truck driver and you've never been through there, maybe you've never been out of your town and you've never seen a runaway truck ramp. If you haven't, I'll show you one here in a little while. So y'all come back. Go back in the sleeper and take it now. I'll wake you up when it's time. We're about to jump back on 24 here and uh, if you've never been up and back down Mon Eagle on uh, I-24, I'm about to take you. Technically speaking, it barely qualifies. It just barely meets the parameters of being considered a mountain. But it's a pretty solid hill going up and back down. A lot of people will underestimate it going down on the side we're going to be going down on. I get a little cocky about it because it doesn't seem like it's that big of a hill, not much of a mountain, but it uh, you'll see more smoked out brakes going down this hill on the other side than you will just about any other place. People get real cocky with it and it just, uh, it's a pretty reasonably steep grade going down and it just, it stays going down for the duration. It never... It doesn't go down a little bit and flatten out and then go down and flatten out. It's just a, it goes down for the entire time. It doesn't, it doesn't let up. It's just a constant downhill for the couple of miles all the way down the other side. And people get real, real, real cocky about it, particularly drivers, you know, that have spent a lot of time over in the mountains out west and stuff. They're like, ah, oh, this ain't nothing. And then uh, nine times out of 10, it's those guys like that that end up blowing the cloud of white smoke that would keep mosquitoes away from, you know, three states away off the brakes. Uh, it's uh, not a new thing either. I grew up over here real nearby here and have been up and down this hill for my entire life. Personal vehicles, truck driving and everything, and that has been a constant thing my entire life is going down Mon Eagle headed towards Chattanooga and smelling brakes. It's just part of driving up and over this thing. I, I, it's a, it's bit many a people, and the runaway truck ramps up here have been very well used over time. I'll show you those when we get up top. We're just at the base of it now, getting ready to go up. I have no load. I'm completely empty right now, so other than people in front of me slowing me down, I can zoom right up it. People like this Snyder that are already over here in the... Uh, left lane and he's got a trailer seal on so he's loaded so it'd be guys like that that slow the whole process going up most likely unless he's real lightweight we shall see he's just everybody feels like they need to get in that left lane and live in it at all times now let's see if he he might have more truck than i'm giving him credit for we'll find out soon but we're just right now we're starting the upward descent right now. He might not be too heavy. He might have his truck running good. He's a, he doesn't seem to be feeling the ill effects of gravity just yet. He's moving along pretty good. I'm going to have to follow suit with him here in a second because I'm going to be eating this guy's bumper up here in just a minute if not. Oh, he's, he's starting to slow down a little bit now. There's a car in front of him though. So, All right, we're going to dive off. All right, Snyder. You're doing it. You're making it. You must not have much nothing in that box. You were doing drastically better than I expected you to. But yeah. You can zoom right on up this hill in a truck when you don't have anything in the trailer. You got a real lightweight one. But it don't take much weight to slow you down going up unless you just got a real big truck. So I'm still in. Nothing in the box. I hadn't even downshifted into 
night yet. I'm still holding 10th gear at 55, 56 miles an hour right now. I'm not slowing down a bit. Matter of fact, we're speeding up a little bit right now. We are going right along, right along. It is a uh, pretty ride up through here. I just had a message flash across my screen. Somebody from the dispatch there needs something from me. There's a brake check station up at the top of here that everybody's supposed to stop at. All trucks, empty or not, are supposed to stop at it. A lot of guys go blow and buy it. I've seen a lot of guys pulled over for it, but a lot of guys get away with it. But when I get in there, I may pull in there and see what the message is about. I'll stop the video for just a moment if I have to. See what they want. Let's see if this Bowman truck knows to stop. Let's see if he's going to do it. It at the, he decided at the last minute. He was like, oh, I guess we need to go there. But he, I see these signs. I probably expect a pre-pass signal or something to go off, but it's not a way station. It's just you're supposed to stop, and there's two lanes you'll see up here. There's a red light on each lane, and you're supposed to roll to a stop, make sure your brakes are functioning and everything, then it'll give you a green light to go down. It helps. It's supposed to be brake check, kind of, and it also helps gap out the trucks, supposedly keep everybody from piling up on top of each other going down but it's also fascinating to me though like you gotta come to a halt heat your brakes up coming in here and getting coming to a complete stop before you before they send you down the hill it's kind of an interesting concept but I suppose the overall overall things probably just to try and keep the trucks somewhat regulated and gapped out it, get, it can get a little wild going down but I'm going to pull in right here for a moment. I'm going to stop the camera for just a minute see what my message was for. Then I'll put y'all back on to go down the downside. All right, I'm back just like that. Nothing major, nothing too important. Just needed a copy of my bill from the load I just delivered. Let's make sure nothing's going to run us over. Somebody coming in here hot. Let's pull up to this red light. Do our little required stop and go. Oh, it already gave me the green. So that's real sporadic about how long it'll make you sit there. Like that didn't really get me out from that truck there too much. But let's go down. If you're not a trucker or you know, and you've never seen a runaway truck ramp before, if you've never been out and about and been to a lot of places and been down the interstate in a mountainous area and seen this, it's quite interesting. And I don't think the camera will do the angle of it justice either. So pretty pretty beefy serious uh runaway ramps uh, over here pretty nice angle on them Let's see if we can well boy this truck is, he must be heavy boy he is creeping they recommend at 80,000 pounds 75 to 80,000 pounds per the sign there 25 miles an hour down some of these guys really have to creep down that guy was bolt calling belly hopper there he might be he might be over 80,000 to not accusing the fellow or nothing but I did that kind of work for a little while and I hauled a uh, hopper bottom for a while and I do know from experience that you are not always going to be uh, at legal weight on those things I hauled trash for a while too I know, I know how it is sometimes you're out here just a little bit heavy and that's just that's your secret and nobody's supposed to know about that. I'm not going to tell anybody if you don't tell anybody. you got to be real careful going down a road like this. So there's a sign. Runaway truck ramp. Left 1,500 feet. We're almost there. I've seen plenty of people run up in this one right here. There's a second one a little further down. And over the years, I've seen lots of people in both of them. Don't look like anybody's been in that one. Well, no, somebody's in there fairly recently. There's some tracks in there. You can see that over there to the left. It's just a upward, really steeply inclined ramp with full of gravel and sand, very deep gravel and sand, and you hit it and it just bogs you down to a stop. I have seen some trucks pretty high up on both of these before. 
really kept some momentum going down this hill when you were loaded up and heavy. Yeah, we're going down. But you see that pretty view? Lovely valley view down through here. The hills are gorgeous. Again, barely a mountain, but a mountain nonetheless. They are pretty to see. Pretty route through here. There's that other truck ramp at. It's right up here. Yeah, there's the sign. Right away, truck ramp left 1,500 feet. Let's see if it's got any tracks in it. See if anybody's had the misfortune of having to use it lately. I can say, luckily in my career of doing this, I've never had to run up in one. I had a rookie or rookie experience or two near burning my brakes completely up. But I've never had to run them with them. Yeah, somebody went pretty far up in that one. You can see, you can see tracks up there pretty good ways. And then you, if you see, they got—I don't know if you can see it good—they got a paved path next to it up there with a drive tow trucks or whatever kind of machinery they need in there to pull the truck out of the pit. I mean, it sinks the trucks up to about the axles in there. It, should, it is meant to bring you to a halt at a rapid pace. I imagine that is not a fun ride once you hit that pit. I just can't imagine that's a good time. And it's not going to do wonders for your truck either. Oh, boy, my ears are popping. If it's a six percent, I think it might be seven percent coming down through here. I can't remember, but it's an, it's, it's it just like I said, it never flattens out. You just go straight down the whole way, and uh, it is enough to where it'll pop your ears coming down. You lose altitude at a pretty rapid pace coming down that hill. Yeah, we're rounding the curve here. We're gonna put our foot in it and open her back up. We're down to the bottom. Closing back up to two lanes. There's this big messed up spot in the road. We're going to go wide. Not go bouncing through it. Here we go. We're at the bottom. We're getting in the home stretch, guys. I'm going to turn this off till we get close to the river down there and I'll let you ride with me to the parking lot and we'll see if we've got a parking space. Y'all be good for the next little while. We made it. Now we just gotta wait for our ride to get here. Miss Aaron is on the way to get me. Then we're going home. You wanna go with me? I might take you for a few minutes. I might invite you in just for a minute. But I gotta kick you out at some point. You can't spend the night. Nah, probably not. I don't think I have enough groceries to feed you. But yeah, I'm gonna get everything packed up, get logged off this e-log, wait for her. See you in a bit. Hey everybody, as you can see from the last video clip, that hyperlapse, we rode straight into the parking space. We got the last available spot where we parked the truck. Now we're at home. Beautiful look. We're not in a truck. There's my sweet baby. There's my other sweet baby. There's my number one sweet baby. Every time I said, there's my baby, she was standing over here in the corner going, Oh, not my turn. Oh, oh not my turn. <laughs> we're, we're home. We're home with all of my prized creatures. I didn't buy... We're not balling like that, though. Neither one of those creatures over there were brand new when I got them. I was brand new. She, on the other hand, is pristine. Yeah. Who am I glad? Who am I happy the most to see? 
Uh, all right, you win. You win. Of course I win. Yeah, we made it back. We're in Chattanooga. We're not leaving tomorrow. We're not leaving Sunday. We're not leaving Monday. We're not even leaving Tuesday. We are going to spend some quality time. Yeah, look at that. Y'all need to get you one of those. <laughs> one of those, too. But yeah, we're going to do fun things. We're going to drive that. We're going to ride that. And uh, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, better, I better not say it, y'all. That's getting a little too risque for my family-friendly channel, ain't it? Yeah. But we're about to run to the store. We got all the stuff out of the car, and we're going to back right back out into the driveway, which we just drove into here. We're going to get off here. We'll reconvene with you guys sometime over the weekend if we do anything cool, if we go blow anything up or do anything crazy like that, we'll holler back at you. Y'all have a good night, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is. Whenever you watch this, have a good one of those, and we'll see you then.